This case is about a 75-year-old female who was diagnosed with dermatomyositis after presenting with a rash on her chest, proximal muscle weakness of upper and lower extremities, dysphagia, and a 15-pound weight loss. Initial skin and muscle biopsies were consistent with dermatomyositis. Labs at the time showed a CKF400, a normal aldolase, a negative ANA, positive anti-CU and anti-SSA antibodies. CT of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis showed pelvic lymphadenopathy and endometrial thickening. She had an elevated CA125. She underwent an endometrial biopsy, which was negative, and was subsequently started on treatment for dermatomyositis. She was treated with five days of pulse steroids and high doses of steroids tapered over the next several months with improvement in her symptoms. She subsequently developed worsening weakness when steroids were tapered below 20 milligrams. Her CKs were normal at this time and EMG reportedly was also normal. It was thought she had steroid-induced myopathy. Subsequently, steroids were tapered and she was started on low-dose mycophenolate. Her weakness and dysphagia continued to progress. Her rash returned again with biopsy-proven dermatomyositis. Ultimately, she presented to the hospital with severe proximal muscle weakness and dysphagia requiring nasogastric tube placement. CK and sed rate were normal at the time and she had a mildly elevated C-reactive protein. EMG was suggestive of an inflammatory myopathy. She underwent a CT chest, abdomen, and pelvis which showed retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy, pulmonary ground glass opacities. PET scan confirmed FDG avid abdominal and supraclavicular lymphadenopathy. Retroperitoneal lymph node biopsy demonstrated high-grade malarian carcinoma. She was evaluated by oncology for treatment considerations, but decided to pursue hospice and unfortunately expired two days later. This case highlights the importance of malignancy screening in dermatomyositis. Dermatomyositis is associated with a six-fold higher risk of malignancy compared to the general population especially in the first two years after diagnosis. We must be vigilant in evaluating these patients for malignancy, especially in cases of refractory disease and unusual clinical presentations.